Hey everybody, Jamin here. Welcome to the instructional video for Team Gantt's Construction Change Order Template. What's great about this template is that once you have it set up for you, you can use it to quickly and easily estimate and generate change orders for construction. This change order template was created, refined, and used for real-world commercial construction projects throughout the last 18 years of my career as a commercial construction estimator. And now, because of Team Gantt, you have access to this awesome tool for free. So be sure to check out TeamGantt.com for more great tools for residential and commercial construction. And make sure to stick around at the end of the video to see some of Team Gantt's templates for planning and managing construction projects in action. Before we jump in, here's a breakdown of what we're going to go over. First, I'll walk you through the elements of the template, what they are, how they work, and how to use them. Next, I'll show you how to use the template to generate your change order form. Then, I'll show you how to set up and edit the template, customizing it to work for you. And finally, I'll take you for a quick tour of one of Team Gantt's construction templates for planning and managing construction projects. Be sure to stick around for that. You definitely don't want to miss out on it. If you want to jump ahead a section or jump back to review something in this video, just use the chapter markers to navigate to the section you want to see. Okay, let's get into it. The template consists of a bid sheet, three customizable databases, one each for material, labor, and equipment, the change order form, and an instructions tab for help and reference. What we're looking at now is the bid sheet. It's where essentially all of the work is done once you have your template set up. It's broken down into four sections, material, labor, equipment, and summary. To get started, at the top of the bid sheet, enter the project's name and change order number. When you do, this information is automatically generated on your change order form. We'll take a look at that later. The material section is where you estimate any material needed for your change order. You want to start by selecting from the Material Type drop-down. When you do, it pulls that item's unit of measurement and unit price from data stored in the Material Database tab. For now, this is all dummy data that I input, but I'll show you how easy it is to edit and customize so you can store your own materials a little later. You can also just directly input materials that you don't want to store in your database. Just know that when you do, it overwrites the formula that links those cells to the material database. If you need to relink them, you can find formulas and instructions on how to do that in the Instructions tab. Once you have your material selected, enter the quantity needed in the Quantity column. You'll see that the total for the item is input automatically. There's also an Adjustment column. You may not use this often. It's really to input things like discounts you want to give. Maybe for a product you have a surplus of in stock, but you still want to track. What you really need to know is that whatever number you input here, it's added to the total for that item. So if you're inputting a discount, just make sure it's a negative number. Once you've entered all of your material items, your material subtotal is calculated. Make sure to adjust the sales tax to the correct percentage for where your business is located. For now, don't mess with the profit. We'll get into that in a few. On to the labor section. This is where you estimate labor for the change order. What's great about this section is that you can choose from multiple labor types that are stored in your labor database. One difference in this section is that you can't directly input any labor types from here. If you try, you'll get an error message. These are pulled from the database and are only editable from there. Once again, this is currently dummy data that I input. I'll show you how to edit it shortly. So let's say you have a crew working on the change order work for two days. It may consist of three laborers, two technicians, and one foreman. Select those labor types from the drop downs in that column. Input the quantity of each labor type in the crew size column, and input the amount of days you'll need for each labor type's crew in the days column. In our case, that's two days for each crew. But say you also want to include a supervisor's time on the project as well. Maybe we only need the supervisor on site for a total of half a day over the duration of the work. Just select supervisor from the labor type drop down, input a crew size of 1, and input 0.5 in the days column. Once you've entered all your labor, you'll see it totaled below. Once again, don't adjust the profit just yet. If you look to the right, you'll see a couple of cells that display the total man days on your change order. You'll also see what your profit is per man day. 
The equipment section is where you estimate any equipment, expenses like permits or parking, additional resources, or anything else you want to price in the change order. Just like in the other sections, it's pulled from the equipment database tab. And like in the labor section, you can't directly enter new equipment here, but have to add it in the equipment database tab. Enter the quantity of your selected equipment and you'll see its profit and total update. Once again, don't adjust the profit cell just yet. The summary section gives you a breakdown of your costs for the change order without profit, your total change order cost amount, total change order profit amount, and your total for the project. You'll notice the big green cell displays your total rounded up to the nearest $25 increment. Once you're completely finished with your change order, the final thing you want to do is change this cell to what you want your final amount to be. This is the cell that generates the total on your change order form. Now we get to profit. The purple cell at the bottom of this page is a global profit setter for the bid sheet. If you want to set the overall profit for the change order, do it from here and it will automatically adjust everywhere else on the bid sheet. In some cases, you might need to set profit for material, labor, and equipment separately from each other. A common reason you might need to do this is if your project contract stipulates different profit percentage allowances for material, labor, and equipment, and you need to show your work. You can do this by just entering a new profit percentage in the cell for the section you want to change. Just know that if you do, it will overwrite the formula that links it to the global profit setter. So if you want to relink it, you'll have to re-enter the formula for that cell. You can find more info on how to do that in the Instructions tab. Finally, the percentage listed to the right of your profit total is the adjusted profit amount. If your profit was set by the global profit setter, then this percentage will match. If you set your profit percentages individually, then this cell will display the total profit percentage of your change order after those adjustments. If you have any questions while you're using the bid sheet, you can check out the red flags in the upper right corner of some of the cells. They contain quick notes explaining how to use those portions of the template. On to the change order form. When you select the form, you'll see that some of the cells are already filled in. This information is generated by your work in the bid sheet. The rest of the cells are all free text. Fill them out and print this page or save it to PDF. This is what you'll send to your customer. The Material Database tab is where all of your materials are stored. Column B contains the name of the material, column D contains its unit of measurement, and column F contains its unit price. If you make changes to the columns in the Material Database, you'll see those changes reflected in the drop-down for the material section of the bid form. You can add as many new items to this database as you like, and they will be available in the material section of the bid form. The same is true for the labor database, but it works slightly differently. You can add or edit labor types in column B. In column D, add or edit the average hourly rate for this labor type. Column F is where you'll factor in burden percentages for labor types. If you're not familiar with calculating labor burden, there's a link at the bottom of this tab with information on what it is and how to factor it. If you don't want to include labor burden, just enter 0% in this column for that labor type. Once you add or edit a labor type, its man day rate will be calculated in column H. This is the number that is used to calculate the labor cost for that type of labor on the bid sheet. You can add up to 24 separate labor types in this template. When you add or edit a new labor type, it will then be available from the labor type dropdown on the bid sheet. The equipment database works similarly to the other databases. Enter or edit equipment type names in column B and their unit prices in column D. Add as many as you need. When you add or edit equipment types, the new types are available from the drop-downs in the equipment section. Once you've updated the database with your data, save it as a template. From now on, it should only take a few minutes to work up your change order. Okay, so real quick, let me show you an awesome tool for managing your construction projects. This is Team Gantt. What we're looking at here is our construction project template. You can take this and build it out to be as robust as you need, and even save what you build as a new template. So if your projects are all pretty similar, you can start from there. Now, if you're in construction, I'm sure you're at least somewhat familiar with Gantt charts. Every construction project uses them. But let me show you what's so special about Team Gantt. First, it's super easy and intuitive. So if you want to move a task, you just move it. Drag and drop. It's that easy. You want to extend a task? Just click the end and drag. Add a dependency. Boom. You're done. 
It works exactly how you think it should. This makes building a powerful, clean, easy project plan super fast, and maintaining it's fast too. When you need to update progress, just enter a percentage in the progress column and it updates. You've already seen how easy it is to move tasks when they shift, but if you need to keep track of how the project changes over time, you can set a baseline. Then, when your project moves, you can always toggle it on to see how things shifted. Here's the best part. If you're anything like I was, you're probably running around from job to job all day. And the last thing you need is to have to constantly keep a nagging customer up to date with what the job's progress is. Well, you can share your Team Gantt project with them and now they can follow along. That alone has got to eliminate, like, most of your calls and emails. <laughs> what a headache those are. But one you don't have to worry about anymore. Another cool thing you can do is set milestones for the ends of phases in your project. So, say you're a residential contractor and you're working on a 203k rehab project. If you know that you need to complete this group of tasks before you can request your next draw, set a milestone for it. Make it dependent on completing those tasks so everyone knows what needs to get done to get to that draw. And if you're sharing your plan with your customer, they know it's coming too so things won't get held up on their end either. In my opinion, what I'm about to show you is the best part about using Team Gantt for construction. You can assign people to your tasks. So if you invite your subs to your plan, they can see exactly when their tasks are coming up. You can even comment back and forth right in the tasks so your communication with them stays with it instead of getting lost down a rabbit trail of emails. You can also store files right with your tasks so you have access to everything right there in your plan. Update versions of your files and still retain access to the old ones. So now you have an easy to find place for things like submittals to live right with the tasks right in your plan. And if you, your supers, or PMs are working from the road, there's a free mobile version so you can view or update the plan while on the go. That's got to save hours of time each week, because let's face it, nobody wants to deal with updating all of their projects after getting back from spending all day on job sites. It's a bummer, but now not one that you have to deal with. Okay, I've been sandbagging it for long enough. Here's the real best part. You can have Team Gantt for free. Yep, you heard that right. Team Gantt offers a free forever account for you to plan and manage your project. Yes, it's limited to one project. Yes, some of the features are limited. Yes, we hope that you love it so much that you upgrade to a paid account. But this one is free and it's pretty powerful. If you want to try it out, there's even a link to sign up right from the bid sheet in your change order template. Or you can go to teamgantt.com. Well, I hope you enjoy the change order template and I hope this video was helpful. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you next time.